Yep, you're probably wondering, am I watching the right video? And is that the guy who I really think it is? Well, this game was made in just C++, and yes, that is, he who must not be named. So let's take it all the way back from the beginning. So, I was browsing my old post, and one caught my eye. It was my old high school computer science game. So, I thought I could make a game from scratch again, but way better than I did back then. I thought at first I would use Java, cause that's the language I used to make the game. <laughs> nah, we all know Java sucks here. But seriously, I tried C Sharp instead cause that's the language I know the best. And with the graphics library to draw stuff. And then I ran some starter code. It threw an error. Turns out that I was using Windows Forms to do display stuff and I was like, oh, of course, because I'm using a Mac right now. And I know cause I checked. So instead of looking for an alternative to Windows Forms, I wanted to give C++ another attempt so I can plan a roadmap to switch to Unreal Engine. Plus, I wanted to learn the language. So I went on a search for a graphics library for C++. All right, we're gonna speed run this. What are C++ libraries, graphic libraries specifically? Oh my God, it managed to search that up. Come on, load up. All right, we'll use that one. And oh, SDL, SDL is another one. And then Ignore this, the KSI stuff, I used to be a fan. Cause I found SFML first, I decided to try to uh, run some starter code and it threw an error again. So I don't know why it didn't work on Visual Studio code, but running it on a terminal with sublime text gave me a moving green circle on a black canvas. But SDL seems to be the more popular library. So I installed it in the terminal, but turns out that was the wrong way. I was actually supposed to install the files. Then I set up SDL in Xcode. And if you're a Windows user, I can, or Linux, I can leave a tutorial link below if you're down to try it yourself. And then that last ran some starter code and do you hear that? No errors, but just a black canvas. But now it's time for me to learn to draw some stuff. First off, I defined the position, width, and height to draw a rectangle. And I had to offset the position because SDL draws the rectangles from its top left corner. So I shifted it by half its width and half its height to center it. And then with this one line, I can tell SDL to render the rectangle. Now for player input, I learned SDL events like returning if we're quitting the game, mouse events, or receiving keys that are pressed or released. But I just used the basic key events for movements for the player. Now after pro programming the movements, I've noticed that there was some laggy movements to the rectangle. And that was because not every frame is running at the same time. So a solution to this would be delta time. Delta time is basically the amount of time that is passed between each frame. And to calculate delta time, you subtract the current time before the frame to the last time. And then I divide it by 1000, so delta time would be n seconds. And velocity will be multiplied to delta time, and that would be added to the player's position for consistent movement. And lastly, I needed to draw images and text under SDL. So I downloaded a pic of Mario and a font to test, then downloaded the SDL image and SDL text library as they aren't within the SDL library alone. And then under Xcode, I set up and initialized both libraries, then load up the Mario, PNG, and Burbank font, convert them to textures so they can be rendered. And then under the game loop, we can render the image and text on an SDL rectangle. But before I run this, it's important that SDL surfaces and SDL textures are destroyed before the game is quitted so memory can be flushed. Now, when I run this, I get a Mario image rendering and moving and text displayed Hello World in Burbank Black. At this point, I think I've learned enough of SDL that I can make something in about an hour while at my Calculus 2 class. So I quickly created a new project with some starter code, and by starter code, I mean that I just deleted what I had before. But anyways, I programmed the player's rectangle variables and then rendered just a black square. I tried adding the player movements again, and already I'm just failing now at the simplest task. But I realized I left the player's speed to zero, and I set it to 100, but it got off screen. So I multiplied the velocity by double 
delta time and you got the player moving correctly i then went to some random website because i needed rgb data to get the color brown because i was going to draw the brown but my first try drawing a brown rectangle was rendered in the wrong place but i corrected that by offsetting half the height of the canvas and then filled the rectangle and did the same thing for the player's rectangle and when you have like less than an hour programming physics to a game it can be kind of tough like adding gravity to a player and trying to get the player colliding to the ground well after what probably took away most of my time i finally got the player colliding to the ground and tested different gravity forces to test out what what felt natural and then with the last few minutes i had left of class i just tried adding some jumping to the player it didn't work like i have intended but it was the best i could do for an hour in class and what i've learned but that's what i was able to do it in an hour but now i'm gonna make a game for real so let's get cooking boys so of course, I started a new project from the bottom again with new starter code, but before I begin programming the player, I took a moment to learn a little bit about classes and C++. One hour later. So after doing some learning, I created the player class and now I'm ready to begin. So after creating the player, I went to Krita and drew my best drawing of a ground tile. Van Gogh would cut his other ear for this drawing. And what I failed to do before was add gravity and make the player jump. But now, I think Isaac Newton would be very proud of me. Then under Krita, I downloaded an image of some beautiful mountains. And then I lowered its resolution to make it into pixel art and program the concept of a camera following the player. Of course, there isn't actually a camera. I just locked the position of the player in the center of the canvas when it crossed the center and program a parallax effect on the background. So I know y'all want to see more of my drawing skills. So here's more. Above our references I'm using to make my own character. I'm just making a few layers of sketches here and there, just refining it. Then I drew a beanie hat because I thought it looked cute. Then I came up with this final drawing, added colors. Then I realized how long this took me. I would have to make a few animations. So instead, I just bought a knight from Mitch here. Then I put him to the game, created a animation class since also the knight package came with many animations. And for now, it just idles and runs. When I added an enemy, that being Bowser doing nothing, I noticed when the player's moving away from Bowser, he looks like he's not staying in place, almost like the tiles were sliding on him. Well, that was only because I miscalculated where to render Bowser. A variable can pose X, which is the camera X axis position, will be zero. But if the player crosses halfway of the canvas, it'll be equal to the player's position. To render objects based off where the camera is, I define an origin, this one being the center of the canvas, then subtracted the origin to cam pose X, and we can call it the camera offset. And at last, a sprite rectangle X axis position is set to its position X variable, plus the camera offset variable. I hope you're still with me here, cause Honestly, I don't know if I'm explaining all of this well, but y'all can let me know in the comments below. So I know, I know y'all probably think this grass tile looks kind of ugly, so just like the trick I did before for the mountains, I downloaded a grass image and lowered its resolution to make it look like pixel art. And I don't want any hate from the pixel artists, I just suck at drawing pixel art, so please chill out in the comments below. I also created blocks, and by creating blocks, I just downloaded an image and changed it, its colors. And for now, the blocks take damage when the player is jumping. That was just for me to test out if it worked. And I took a little inspiration from my crafting mask over the blocks based off the state of its health. Then comes the fun part of making a game from scratch, that is collision detection and resolution. So let me tell you about the axis aligned bounding box, meaning this type of collision only works on two boxes that are aligned. Both boxes have a minimum and maximum value for each axis. The minimums are the position of the boxes and the maximums are, are usually the position plus the scale of the box. Then we compare the maximums and minimums overlap and if they all overlap, and that means there is a collision. For collision resolution, meaning we want overlapping colliders to separate, um, let's just say this is my code for resolution. I don't explain, but it is something that I later revised. Now, it was buggy at first, but a few tweaks later, it was a bit more stable, just that there was gravity forcing the player towards the enemy. Even the blocks, I didn't get it right the first time. 
it looked as if the collisions were shifted. I figured that I was mixing up the actual block's X position to the block's X render position. And also, somehow the enemies were walking on top of nothing. And there Bye, turned out to be time. a similar pro problem from the blocks. And now, the Goombas fall off to their unavoidable death. So I went ahead and tweaked even more of the collision resolutions to try to fix the jittery bug and I wanted to have multiple moving colliders interacting and the last proposed collision resolution that I had was a mess and the downside of it was it only collided on static colliders, objects that didn't move. So when it's collided with another moving collider, the moving collider was acting as if it was a static collider. So instead of thinking of collisions as binary, I just thought of them as measured collisions. So I subtracted the minimums to the maximums of the left, right, top, and bottom side, and the biggest difference will be the impulse return value to calculate the resolution. Now if I wanted to still leave one object static, we'll leave the position as is, and only the dynamic object will receive the full impulse to the corresponding axis. Now if we wanted both objects to be dynamic, then both receive half the impulse and the other object receives the opposite direction of the impulse. And then at last I ended up with the solution, it's still a little bit jittery but I can have multiple dynamic colliders interacting in a sort of real physics way. So my enemies, they weren't doing it, anything so I created their behaviors so for now I just set the enemies to move to the right but that can make them fall. So I created a trigger class that acts like a invisible box that can detect collisions. So when enemies hit each other or the trigger, they'll move to the opposite direction they were hit. Then when the enemy is in range of the player, it would follow and attack the player. I tested out different behaviors. Some didn't work, they would just push the player out the screen. And some kind of orbited around the player, which was kind of cool. Then made a simple health bar in Krita, fixed the attack range as it was only taking account of the x-axis. So even if the player was on top of the enemy, they would still try to follow it. Now I probably could have kept that behavior, but if... Y'all think I should leave that in the comments, I don't know, but up to y'all. And tested if the health bar and enemy attack function were working. Now, I know some of y'all programmers will find this cringe, but for now, what I did was made a load function for each animation for the players, so wait. Wait, wait, no, 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 I'll fix it later, I promise, I'll fix it later. But seriously, I don't recommend anybody doing this. It's very dangerous. Anyways, I tested the player attack animation and it works great and added a trigger so when a player attacks any object that collides the player attack trigger, they'll take damage. And at this point, I had this vibe that, that said, I have a legit fun running game that was all made somewhat from, from scratch, which was kind of cool. But as I was finishing up programming features, my laptop was getting quite warm for a simple game. So I ran the game for a few minutes and noticed that there was about 30 gigabytes of memory being used. I double checked and an analyzed its analytics and oh my god 30 gigabytes of memory was being used. I later found the suspects were the score and time UI accumulating memory. Each frame I thought I was replacing the updated UI texture, what was really happening was that even though I was updating and replacing the texture's variables, it was still not being destroyed so I added a destroy function to the text class which resolved the issue. I haven't even mentioned that I've totaled up to 1800 lines of code. So I needed to revise my code so I added an entity class and with the new entity class I programmed a collision mechanism and made a few final touches like adding more animations to the player, clouds to the background, a power up, designed a level in Krita, added sounds, and the rest, well, just watch the short gameplay here. Alright, this is the game, and already we're glitching. Alright, oh look who it is, I'm not gonna say his name, his name does not deserve to be said. <laughs> yeah, this is some bad commentary guys, sorry, but like, I don't know what to say. We're gonna go all crazy out here, oh look at that. <gasps> like, I even programmed the physics onto this game guys. Oh, what just happened? Okay, whatever. No! 
Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Zero deaths. Zero deaths. Still zero deaths. No! Zero deaths. Ah, uh, let's get the cupcake. Not again. I'm not gonna say his name. His name should not be said. It shall not be said. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god, I died. Zero deaths. No! 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 Oh, there we go. Oof, that was a close one. If I were to die, that would not be the last phase I would want to see. Well, looks like we're back where we've started. And oh no, I'm about to die here. Wait, what the fuck? It's Gideon! Come on, Gideon, let's raw dog this. What the hell is this? Destroy the child. No. Gideon, where did you go? Bro, I thought we was homosexual. Well, what's happening here? <sighs> it's astounding. Look at that brilliant form. There can be no doubt. This is the true power, complete in all its majesty. This is Autonomous Ultra! Cupcake. Um, that's right. That's what it is. But let me do what no one could do. One hour later. Wow, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. Good riddance. Well, that was all. That was the entire game. And yes, that was the entire bass bottle. It was, I know it was really quick, but let me give y'all, uh, I do have some thoughts on learning C++. This really took a long time. I did have to learn some, some programming concepts. Usually when I program, I just, you know, I mean, I've been using a game engine, so yeah, I had to learn some C++ concepts like interfaces. They came out very clutch into making this game. There's like over 2,000 lines of code, and don't think there's supposed to be like 2,000 lines of code on this, but um, yeah, that was making an entire game just in C++. It was a bitch. Let, let me just say that in one word. It was a bitch to make this, but yeah. And if y'all been watching this, thank you. I appreciate y'all.